The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant says it has detected 10,000 millisieverts of radioactivity per hour at the site. It's the highest level since the nuclear accident in March. Workers of Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, measured the amount on Monday near the pipes at the bottom of a duct between the number one and the neighboring number two reactor buildings. TEPCO has restricted access to the site and the surrounding area. It says the workers who took the reading were exposed to a maximum of four millisieverts. The utility says the high level is because the pipes were used to vent air containing radioactive substances from the crippled number one reactor on March 12th. It also detected a maximum of 1,000 millisieverts per hour outside in the debris, as well as a maximum of 4,000 millisieverts per hour inside one of the reactor buildings. According to the science ministry, a human exposed to 10,000 millisieverts would likely die within a week or two. TEPCO also says that it has discovered about 700 tons of highly radioactive water on Saturday in the basement of an on-site building near the storage facility for contaminated water. It says the water contained 19,000 becquerels of radioactive cesium-134 per cubic centimeter and 22,000 becquerels of cesium-137, both very high levels. The utility is investigating how the leak happened, but it says that there is no danger of the contaminated water leaking out of the building. Concerns are growing in Japan about beef contaminated with radiation. The government has ordered Tochigi Prefecture to suspend its shipments of cattle because of fears the meat could pose a health threat. This is the fourth prefecture to face this restriction. The government ordered the suspension on Tuesday after beef from four cows in Tochigi was found to contain unsafe levels of radioactive cesium. Cesium was also detected in rice straw used to feed beef cattle in the prefecture. Farmers in Fukushima, Miyagi and Imate prefectures are also being told to halt shipments of the suspected herds. The government says it will allow the transport of these two animals to resume once, once radiation levels in beef fall below its safety standard. Tochigi Prefecture says it will test meat from all of its beef cattle, but the prefecture ships more than 55,000 of these cows per year, and fewer than 30,000 can be processed locally. The government is expected to ask the prefecture to drop a realistic plan for the resumption of shipments, such as putting a limit on the number of cattle transported. Radioactive cesium has been detected not only in beef cattle, but also fertilizers and humus in Japan. The government has laid down a new set of criteria for the use of the contaminated compost. Last week, the Agricultural Ministries asked farmers and fertilizer producers in 17 prefectures in eastern and central Japan to voluntarily refrain from using or selling compost and humus made from fallen leaves, possibly contaminated with radioactive cesium. This was after humus shipped from Tochigi Prefecture was found to be contaminated with radioactive substances. On Tuesday, the ministry urged farmers not to use humus and compost that contain 400 becquerels of cesium per kilogram or more. It also called on them not to use livestock feed containing 300 becquerels per kilogram or more. The ministry says it will notify local governments how to measure cesium in fertilizers as soon as possible. The Japanese government is going to start streamlining the monitoring of radiation levels across the country. So far, various organizations have been conducting their own checks since the March 11th accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The new plan came out Tuesday in response to criticism that interpreting results collected by the central government, local municipalities and utilities is confusing. So radiation monitoring will be divided into six categories, air, water, farm soil and grass, trees and food. Each organization will be given a specific area to monitor and analyze. They must propose concrete measures on how they will carry out the work. The government plans to set up about 250 monitoring points across the country. One of its goals is to drop maps showing radiation levels at schools and public libraries by mid-August. Japan's minister in charge of the nuclear crisis says full-scale decontamination work will begin next month in the 20-kilometer evacuation zone around the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Goshi Hosono made the remark on TV on Monday. Hosono said 
The government will begin decontaminating on a large scale and continue monitoring radiation levels. He added that preparations will be made so that residents can return home by early next year. The minister said the evacuation zone could be lifted after the second stage of bringing the reactors under control is completed next January. Another case of questionable conduct by Japan's nuclear regulator has come to light. A former official of the Nuclear Safety Agency has admitted asking a regional utility to mobilize its people for a government symposium on nuclear power five years ago. One of the former section chiefs of the Nuclear Industrial and Safety Agency told NHK that he made the request to an executive of Shikoku Electric Power Company ahead of the symposium in Ehime Prefecture. The former section chief said he pushed the utility to take part in the event by posing questions and expressing opinions. He said he wanted its participation because opponents of nuclear power had prevented constructive debate at a similar symposium the previous year. The former section chief denied that his aim was to manipulate public opinion. Still, Shikoku Electric mobilized retired employees and people from its affiliates, providing some of them with samples of the desired questions and opinions. The theme of the symposium was the planned use of mixed uranium and plutonium fuel at the utility's nuclear plant in Ehime Prefecture. Back then, the company was waiting for local approval to start this method of power generation. Earlier, another utility, Chubu Electric, reported that the Nuclear Safety Agency had asked it to make sure that questions in favor of nuclear power be asked at a government symposium in 2007. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well today. Um, I thought this uh, bared repeating. For those of you who don't know this or haven't heard it yet, um, this is off a global security newswire. Uh, and, and it's daily news on nuclear, biological, chemical weapons, terrorism, and other related uh, uh, issues. BARDA funds research radi for radiation treatment. So this, this is a good signal because, as we know, Fukushima is really coming unhinged over there. Uh, they're in bad shape. This is Tuesday, August 2nd. The U.S. Uh, Health and Human Service Department on Monday announced the awarding of advanced research funding to two companies that are developing medical countermeasures to treat individuals suffering from acute radiation sickness. The department's Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, which funds the development of experimental drugs and vaccines for weapons of mass destruction, awarded two contracts uh, to Ap Apogee Biotechnol Biotechnology Corp. in Pennsylvania and Avaxia Biologics in Massachusetts. The nearly $5 million in funding to the two biotech companies falls under continue, continuing BARDA efforts to advance work in treatment and diagnostic methods which would be used in the event of a nuclear or radiation or radiological attack or an atomic incident. Apogee's contract provides two million over two years for initial studies on, into an oral drug designed to lessen the gastrointestinal trauma that follows from exposure to large amounts of radiation. Oh boy. The experimental medicine blocks the sphinogosian kinase enzyme that has anti-inflammatory issues. Avaxia uses its 2.9 million to undertake initial research efforts into the utility of a new drug that blocks the tumor necrosis factor protein, which amplifies inflammation. Studies into two radiation drugs are to assess whether they will work properly if taken one day or more following exposure to radiation. 
Should study results prove promising, the next phase in treatment would be, be uh, clinical trials and other research into treatment utilities. The U.S. Health and Human Services uh, Department release of August 1st. So that gives uh, anybody with ears to hear a good inclination of what we're breathing. And it's not going away. Ever. The mayor of Hiroshima will call for a review of Japan's energy policy when he delivers his annual peace declaration on August 6th, the day the city was destroyed by the U.S. atomic bomb in 1945. Hiroshima Mayor Kazumi Matsui spoke to reporters on Tuesday. I will state that the Japanese people have lost their trust in nuclear power because of the crisis at Fukushima Daiichi. He said he feels his declaration should address the situation realistically. The mayor of Nagasaki, the other city that was atom bombed, disclosed last month that his annual peace declaration on August 9th will urge the government to shift away from nuclear energy towards safer sources of electricity.